All right, so I was about to go live soon with my co-host Nick to do our podcast. We are about to soon, but the Mets just made a trade, and thankfully they made a trade before we did go live because that would have been annoying if they waited till after. But the Mets end up making a trade that we expected them to make as they move Mark Hanna for Justin Jarvis from the Milwaukee Brewers. So, yeah, the Mets continue their sale here of guys that have one year or two years left. There is an option next year. I believe it's a club option for Mark Hanna next year. So the Brewers could either pick that up or, of course, they could decline it and Canna will be a free agent, which I'm sure if the Mets do end up trying to contend next year, they might circle back to Canna considering how much he loves it here and how much he wanted to stay. But it doesn't shock me that they ended up doing this because you got to get what you can. And they just got themselves a fairly solid prospect, too, from Mark Hanna. It remains to be seen what Justin Jarvis will become. But we're going to break down him. We're going to break down Canna also for the Brewers fans watching this. Tell you guys what you're getting in Mark Hanna. But before we jump into it, leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. And turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live here on the channel, which we will be going live very soon for the podcast. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But let's talk about this as, yeah, the Brewers acquire Mark Hanna, who is an outfielder slash first baseman that could also play third base. He's a guy that could play where you need him to play. I'm sure he could even play shortstop if you want him to, although that's probably not the best idea. But I'm just saying he's a guy that is willing to do whatever it takes for his team. He's definitely a heart type guy, and he's not necessarily the best baseball player. He really isn't. He'll give you a good on base percentage. He'll give you a decent OPS. He gives his power is just kind of went down, which is surprising because in Oakland, he was kind of, heading for a bit more power his peak was 26 home runs but he was closer to that 20 home run range in oakland where we haven't really seen it with the mets he hit 13 last year which isn't bad for what we expect from mark Hanna. more the other numbers were definitely better he also loves to get hit by a pitch he got hit by 28 leading the league in hit by pitches last year and then 27 the year before in Oakland, which led the league as well. So, and then he already has nine this year. So he does get hit a lot, but for his numbers this year, he's hitting 245 with a 343 on base. So that took a bit of a dip from where it normally is. His slugging's at a 381 and then his OPS is at 725. Six home runs for him, 29 RBI, seven stolen bags. And he loves to get some doubles as he has 15 doubles on the year. And all this is in 89 games played. So, yeah, Mark Hanna, decent little player. OPS plus at 102 also. Wanted to mention that. But, again, a decent guy. And I think he'll do better being in Milwaukee. He wasn't really playing every day. He was kind of a platoon guy, which is also why I'm okay with the Mets moving him because – if you're not going to play him every day, what's the point of really keeping him around? I want guys that could play every day and then you build a bench later on. And again, he's a solid baseball player having a bit of a down year. And even then he said he was dealing with some issues last year. I forgot exactly what they were, but still, I, I think he's going to be a solid player for the Milwaukee Brewers and I wish him all the best. I don't have any ill will feelings towards Mark Hanna. Great guy as well. So I wish him the best, but yeah, uh, Mark Hanna is a Milwaukee Brewer now. And yeah, he's going to just give you a decent batting average. He, he's kind of just going to give you decent everything and some good on base numbers there, as he will, of course, get all. He, he draws a lot of walks and hit by pitches. So yeah, uh, Mark Hanna, wish him the best. But let's talk now about the Mets side of this, as they get Justin Jarvis, who is ranked. 12th for the Milwaukee Brewers, according to Baseball America. And on MLB Pipeline, he's ranked 30th. I trust Baseball America more considering the fact that they update their prospect rankings more. And I feel like they do a deeper dive into these prospects. So I trust that more. And even if he's, if you, even if you want to say they overrated him on, and they're overranking him on Baseball America, if you want to say they're underrating him on MLB Pipeline, you still then get yourself a top 20, 25 prospect for a a guy that's a platoon player that wasn't probably going to be here after the season or maybe only be here for one more year. It makes all the sense in the world to make this trade. And it's a pitcher, which Met fans have been dying for. And I find it hilarious that Met fans have been crying for a pitcher or a pitching prospect. Now we get one. It's like, oh, he's not good enough. I, I really am interested in what 
Justin Jarvis could become. He is in Triple A right now. He only has pitched 11 and two thirds of an inning in Triple A, and has not necessarily gone that great. As he has a 10.8 ERA, a 7.03 FIP, so at least the FIP's a bit better. An expected FIP at 7.62, but he did put up some solid numbers in Double A, or he at least has this year in. 14 games that he started. He has a six and four record. Not that that really matters. A 10.8 case per nine, 3.09 walks per nine. So definitely has a lot of control issues. That's really the big thing with him. He, because in double A the year before, he only got four games, but 6.75 walks. The year before, though, uh, or in that same year in A ball, high A ball, he had a 3.79. He needs to control the walks. If he could get his command in check, he will definitely be a very good pitcher for the Mets and maybe not very good, but he'll be a good enough, reliable pitcher, maybe a back end rotation guy. I don't expect him to be a top level pitcher, but you'll be surprised. Maybe he ends up having a random uh, spurt and maybe the control issue he'll fix. And that just makes him an elite pitcher for all we know that could happen, but I'm not going to say that it is going to happen. I'm not going to count on it. What I expect from him is to be a back-end starter at one point for the Mets or maybe a swingman kind of like Trevor Williams was. And if you get that for Mark Hanna, I think you're doing yourself very well. And again, it doesn't hurt to add in the pipeline. Worst case scenario, he doesn't pan out that great and you trade him in a year or two to help you get better in the short-term future. So again, I I, I don't hate this. This year, 3.33 ERA and double A. Uh, 4.02 FIP, 4.19 expected FIP. Like I said, K per nine at a 10.8. Home runs per nine at a 1.19. So, yeah, I, I don't hate this. I don't hate this at all. This tweet from Mike Mayer says that he has a fastball, which is up to 96. So he definitely has some good velocity there on that fastball. He throws a sweeper, a curveball, and a splitter. So, He has a nice little arsenal. Maybe you want him to develop one more pitch if he's going to be a starting pitcher. But at the end of the day, if he's going to be a swing man, four pitches should be enough. Or if he even is a back-end rotation guy, four pitches should be enough for him. I'm very excited to see what the Mets get here in Justin Jarvis, whether it is, again, a back-end starter, a swing man, whatever it may be. You got something for a guy that isn't going to be here beyond this year. And that's all you have to be thankful for as a Met fan. And that is all we could be happy about. We can't just be mad because, oh, they didn't get a top-end prospect for Mark Hanna. Like, no, I'd understand if this was the type of guy that they got for, if this was the type of guy they got for, I don't know, Justin Verlander. They got outside of the top 10 uh, for prospects there. Like, yeah, then we could be mad. But for Mark Hanna, a guy that was platooning and, wasn't going to be here beyond this year and really didn't have any impact yet. This isn't, this is a good return in my opinion. And maybe I'm just being biased. Maybe I just, because I'm so blinded and want them to build up the prospect pool and rebuild. But I just don't, again, see how anyone could feel negatively about this. But again, we'll see what else happens. According to Jeff Passan, they still are not done with making moves which we've seen reports. John Heyman put out a tweet that's looking like Justin Verlander. They're trying to hammer home a framework, the framework, I should say, for a deal there today just because of how many hurdles there is involved in that one where if they wait last minute, it's going to be complicated between the no trade clause, between opt-outs, opt-ins, and money, all of that is going to be complicated for the Mets. So they want to get that framework done soon. And then, of course, Tommy Pham, We'll see what happens. Apparently, Narvaez might be gaining a lot of interest as well. Quintana, there's not really much word there, but that's another name that could be on the move. Carlos Carrasco, a team might take a flyer on. There's a lot that could be done here for the Mets. If they somehow get anything for Carlos Carrasco, I think we definitely could be happy about that. But again, we will wait and see. Uh, Before I click off here and stop, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, The Cubs acquire Candelario. Uh, the Giants end up getting AJ Pollock. So there's definitely moves going on. There's a lot going on right now. And yeah, 7 p.m. Be there. Huge live stream coming up. We'll break down the trades more. We'll break down these prospects more. It's going to be a fun stream, and I'm excited for this one. But thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that. Uh, I got to run because of the fact that I got to make upload this, make a TikTok. 
and then go live. So there, there's a lot to go on. I'll see you guys in the next one.